Hi everyone, and welcome to the International Print Center New York's 2020 Virtual Benefit. I'm Allison Stewart, and I'm delighted to be your host this evening and to celebrate along with all of you, this dynamic institution and our luminous honorees that have contributed to the field of prints and to our cultural lives. I'm not only a big fan of IPCNYs, I'm also host of WNYC's All of It, the live daily radio show all about art, ideas, and culture in New York City and beyond. And I'm happy that so many of you are joining us from our beloved Big Apple, but also from across the country and even around the globe, from your laptops and cell phones and TVs at home or at work, which for many of us is the same thing these days. Thank you for being with us. Tonight, IPCNY is proud to honor two people whose trailblazing work reflects the deep commitment to print that IPCNY champions. Judith Salatkin, founder and owner of Solo Impression Inc. here in New York, and Christoph Sharik's the Robert Lehman Foundation Chief Curator of Drawings and Prints at the Museum of Modern Art. At the end of the hour, we'll also hear from the incomparable artist and director William Kentridge from a studio in Johannesburg, who will be honored in person next year when he can make the trip to New York. But first, let's learn more about IPCNY and its impact. Good evening and welcome each and every one of you to IPCNY's 2020 Annual Benefit. I'm Judy Hecker, Director of IPCNY, and I'm here on the first day of our reopening since more than six months of physical closure in our gallery, and it's quite emotional. But we never really closed our doors. We opened new doors online to audiences across the country and across the globe with digital exhibitions, 3D exhibition tours, Zoom panel discussions, and so much more. So what is IPCNY? IPCNY is Emerging Printmakers. Priceless, really. The International Print Center for Artists is priceless. IPCNY is my paper print family, our paper print family. IPCNY is a hub for layers, process, multiples, and the social. Uh, it was really like a hub where people came together and we could talk about what we loved which was printmaking. It's a place for people to get together from all around the world to share their story and hear other people's voices through print. IPCNY is incubator, facilitator, enabler. Although tiny in size, IPCNY is gargantuan in ambition and impact. I think our program has always championed artists at all moments in their careers. This has evolved in exciting ways as we bring new and diverse voices to the gallery whether as an artist in residence, as a mentor or mentee in our professional development program, or as an artist from another region who is exhibiting in New York for the first time. We're the only nonprofit exhibition space wholly devoted to the medium of prints, which means we're a flagship hub for the medium. We provide a platform for new and critical works by artists. We're an exhibition space for unrestricted dialogue by curators who are uncovering new scholarship and look at the vital issues of our times through the lens of printmaking. Prints are a unique medium. At the same time, they're ubiquitous. Prints are everywhere in our world. They're wheat pasted on the streets for protest. They are a means of creative collaboration between artists and printers. They are intimate gems, but their formats also have no bounds. They are affordable and they are collectible. We are an educational space for all ages and backgrounds, building a passion for a medium that is all about accessibility. We are small, 1,500 square feet and a staff of five, but we think big. The New York Times called us a scrappy nonprofit space and gave us our first review with the landmark show, Black Pulp. New York Magazine named our first fully digital exhibition this spring as one of their top choices, just above the frick. Ann Coffin opened IPCNY 20 years ago with a vision, and I've had the privilege of being director the past four years. And you, all of you, have supported us and stood by us through it all. And so tonight, we ask you to give in whatever way you can so that we can continue to build on our success into the next 20 years. During this pandemic, your support has never been more critical because our typical sources of funding are and will be under great stress. And so we need your partnership and generosity now more than ever. There are a few places in the art world where each and every donation can have such a big impact. So please give in whatever way you can this year. I wanna offer my congratulations and gratitude to our 2020 honorees, Christoph Shariks of the Museum of Modern Art and Judith Salakin of Solo Impression Inc. 
And I also thank William Kentridge, who has relayed a fantastic video and will be with us in person next year as our 2021 honoree. I also want to thank IPCNY's dedicated and generous Board of Trustees, who's helping pull us through this most difficult time in the institution's history. I want to thank all of the individual donors who have been with us for so many years, as well as the foundations and the city, state, and federal grants that we receive year after year. And finally, enormous gratitude to the 2020 Benefit Committee for supporting IPCNY through this virtual event. I love this idea of IPCNY as a place for gathering, but also how IPCNY, with its indomitable staff of five, immediately adapted their programming to our new online lives, and how now, more than ever, we see the medium of prints not only as artistic expression, but as a force for community engagement and political expression. Art teaches us, activates us, and uplifts us when we need it the most. Now, this event is IPCNY's leading fundraiser for its programs and operations, and so we are also here tonight to ask for your support. The pandemic has put strains on IPCNY's main sources of funding. And so IPCNY is counting on your generosity to keep the momentum and build the programming that advances the field. This can be done in two ways. Right now, on your cell phone, you can text your name and the amount you'd like to donate to 347-835-5567. That number is on your screen. Then you'll receive a link to complete your donation. There's also a donate button on your screen that you can click, and then a link will be sent to your phone. Or you can always visit IPCNY's website at ipcny.org and make your contribution there. The second way to support is by buying prints. It's also a really fun way. Artists, galleries, and publishers have donated 31 extraordinary works to benefit IPCNY. Many donated in honor of Judith Slotkin, Christoph Cheriks, and William Kentridge. So you want to check out this auction. It is guilt-free shopping because it supports IPCNY's programming. You'll see fantastic works by Betty Saar, Jonas Wood, Dan Walsh, Elizabeth Murray, and so many more. Visit artsy.net slash IPCNY benefit and register for the silent auction. The auction remains open through 5 p.m. Eastern time tomorrow. So be sure to check bidding tomorrow as well. You can place your bid live or you can simply set a maximum bid so Artsy can continue bidding for you up to that amount. And now on to the evening's main event. I'm excited to bring in artist Joyce Kozlov, who will introduce her longtime friend and IPCNY's 2020 honoree, Judith Solotkin. I'm Joyce Kozlov. I'm an artist and a very old friend of Judith's. Judith and I were fellow graduate students at Columbia University between 1965 and 1967. The second year there, we were roommates. We shared an apartment on 117th Street in Riverside, and um, we've been friends ever since. I went to Tamarind in 1972. The first woman master printer in the program was, when I was there, Mary Sundstrom, but she didn't make it all the way through the program. I encouraged Judith to apply. And she got in and she was the first woman who made it through the program. When she came back from Tamarind, she lived in a very small apartment on 8th Avenue in the 20s, low 20s, very small. And she bought a secondhand litho press, which took up almost the whole apartment. And then she hung a sign out on the door that said solo in big letters. And um, I will always remember that. I think I was one of the first artists who worked with her. I don't think I was the first. We finished a series of lithos together in 1977, and they were very complicated. They were like 15 runs and 15 colors. Some people might say, no, I mean, this is not uh, possible. And she likes that kind of challenge. 
and it took a really long time to do them. She didn't have any backup staff there, it was just her. Um, but that was the beginning. She worked in a number of different addresses over the years, you probably know that. Uh, one was on Park Avenue South, one was in Soho, one was in Chelsea. Really, she had to move with the real estate market like a lot of other people, like all the art galleries. As soon as uh, the pioneers were uh, outpriced as it became more gentrified, and then she moved her shop and now she's in Riverdale. And then she began working with the sewing machines. And she was a pioneer in that. She was one of the first people because she likes to sew. And then it was Louise Bourgeois who was the first one who lived around the corner from her when she was on 20th and 8th Avenue. And uh, she worked with her beginning from the early days. And Louise wanted to make these books that were sewn. And Judith got very excited about that and got a digitized sewing machine. And after that, that became a kind of specialty of hers. And then a lot of other printers started doing it. The 70s was an exciting time because it was the beginning of the feminist movement. In a way, we, we came into our own at the right moment because things for women in previous generations were just terrible. But we created our own structures and, um, and she created something out of nothing. And it's still going after all these years. She never had any financial backing. She did it all on her own. She worked with all kinds of artists, and she just invented new ways of working and printmaking, and she was a pioneer as a woman. And also, she's a character in the art world. Everybody knows Judith. I mean, Judith is a, is a force. I'm very honored present this award to Judith. And I was so pleased when she asked me to do it. It's been a long journey. And she's more, more than deserving. Hi, I'm Judith Solotkin, living up here in the Bronx. I don't know how many shops there are up in the Bronx, but here I am. <laughs> Um, I moved up to um, Riverdale because uh, I found a place to live up here. And so I can walk over to this very small and compact shop. And basically, I don't have to have staff. I can do all the work, again, solo. But, you know, work on the lithography projects or the sewing projects without the stress of so much overhead. And I've always been a singular person. I've always worked um, by myself. However, I've had marvelous assistance over the years like Rodney Doyle, uh, who worked with me for many years, and Suzanne Weniger, and Vicki Lax, Rebecca Lax, and Nancy Bressler, uh, some of my assistants. I, at one point, had a whole group of silhouettes, uh, about 10 people, um, when we were working on the Louise Bourgeois project. The, the hats are not a gimmick. The hats are a passion and something I love to do and make. And the reason I wear so many hats is that that's what I had to do in order to set up my business. I had to learn how to become a professional printer and work professionally, collaboratively with artists and make a living. I had to learn how to uh, publish work and do contract work, uh, to be a gallerist and promote work, how to show at art fairs. And so I was always changing my roles, and the hats are unique expressions of my work, whereas the prints have always been collaborative. And so when people ask me, what do you make? Um, I always tell them about the prints I'm working on, but then they can see what I personally make by looking up above my nose. <laughs> and this is my rainy day hat. I wanted to talk about the artists because I wouldn't be here talking to this wonderful community of the IPCNY unless I hadn't worked with Howard Hodgkin, Louise Bourgeois, Nancy Spiro, Leon Golub, uh, Michael Mazur, Wolf Kahn, William Bailey. Working with them collaboratively on their work has been such 
a bonding and such an intimate experience. Dottie Addy, you know, all the women from the AIR gallery and that generation, Howardina Pindell, Francois Gillot, who is in her 90s now, Linda Benglis, Agata Amir. I had a letter press shop where I printed with Donald Sultan and uh, David Mamet and Rene Ricard and Judy Rifka with Richard Bosman and John Torriano, Christian Markley. You know, I don't want, want this to be just a literary of names. However, each name is so essential because it really defines my career. People always ask me, who are you working with? when I see them. And as if, you know, that was the essential thing. I think what's essential is just that I love working with people and making their work with them and seeing their take on an idea and then they come up with something I would never have thought of. Um, and that's always a joy for me, you know, how they think in their own inimitable way and they come up with something so fruitful. Hello, my name is Andrew Witkin, longtime member of the Judith Salotkin Fan Club. I love and admire Judith for her tenacity, her creativity, her egolessness. Congratulations, Judith. Judith, you are so deserving of this award. Congratulations. And I'd like to think that I'd speak for all the people that came through the doors of Solo Press through the 1980s into the 1990s who you've had a tremendous effect on. Congratulations. Hello guys, my name is Rodney Doyle. I know Judith because um, I worked with her for 17 years. Uh, I was her printer for a very long time. And uh, I think she's very deserving of this award because she's been dedicated to printmaking for so long. She's been a part of making great work. She took me under her wing and made me into a printer. I am set up for her being a part of my life. I just want to say congratulations. You totally deserve this award. I love you and care about you so much. I think she's a marvelous candidate for this award from the International Print Center New York. She's been international in her scope and in her practice. She's a born New Yorker, and I think a New Yorker through and through who deeply loves New York. I just want to say congratulations to Judith. You've earned it. You deserve it. I know Judith since 2003, when she invited me and my partner Reza Farkonde to make a print with her. It was wonderful to be working with her. I'm very, very happy she's being honored tonight. Uh, she deserves it. I have been contacting her from now and then to ask advice on printing and she always knows uh, how to do things and where to find things and she is very knowledgeable and I'm very, very happy for her. I think it was the first time that I wrote to Judith that I accidentally added an S on the end of solo impression. She very, very kindly reminded me that there is no S and that's because you only make one first impression. And what an impression she made on me. I'm honored to know Judith and to have really followed in her footsteps in a way to become another female Tamar Master Printer. Thank you, Judith, so much. You are truly one of a kind. Congrats. I want to thank the IPCNY for this marvelous uh, award uh, to recognize my shop and all the people who worked with me um, and all the artists whom I've worked with. Also the print community that I adore, old master prints and contemporary prints, all the print shops, Tandem Press, Durham Press, ULAE, and so on, all the printers who work so hard. And I also want to dedicate this award to an extremely dear close friend of mine, Lila Riemann, who just recently passed. So in closing, I'd like to thank Joyce Kozloff. Talk about good friends who I've worked with for so many years, from 1965 to the present. We've worked together periodically over all these years. I hope we can do projects together in the future, and the future's in front of us.
Thank you, Joyce, and congratulations, Judith, on such a deserving award. You are clearly adored by so many. Now let's take a closer look at what's going on at IPCNY right now and hear from Natasha Becker, one of the talented guest curators of the current exhibition, Living in America. And then we'll hear more from IPCNY trustee and Metropolitan Museum of Art curator, Jennifer Farrell. Hi, I'm Natasha Becker and I'm one of the curators of this exhibition. I'm also one of the founding curators of Assembly Room a curatorial collective and community in New York City. Living in America is an exhibition in four acts. What you see around me in the gallery are acts one and act two, which evolve around the themes of outrage and love. A couple of works that really anchor the themes of outrage and love are William Villalongo's and Karen Rivas's Prince. Both of these works address the Black Lives Matter movement and the protests around police violence, but they also address the intimacies of black life, whether that is through symbols that are very banal and ordinary, like the hair comb in the case of Karen Rivas, or the hoodie in the case of William Villalongo's figure. They address the everydayness of being a black person and tell these more intimate stories of black life in this politically charged and violent context though. Along with my two co-founders, Yulia Topchi and Paula Gallio, we were very excited by the opportunity to curate this exhibition at IPCNY and to work with Judy Hecker and her amazing team to realize the exhibition and the openness of the organization to independent curators and to collaboration and to exploring printmaking in this expanded um, visual culture of protest and action and activism. Thank you, Natasha, and congratulations on Living in America. IPCMY supports focused, critical exhibitions and the voices of independent and under-recognized scholars who present original and compelling research and urgent perspectives that might not find a platform elsewhere. Exhibitions like Edge of Visibility present the unusual strategies and the resulting profound meaning of prints with a reduced level of visibility or pulled in Brooklyn the first exhibition to highlight the deep network of printers in that robust historic borough, or paper borders that created cross-cultural dialogues about immigration and xenophobia through the work of Emma Nishimura and Tahir Carl Karmali. It's been rewarding and a joy to be involved as a member of the board and to see these projects come to fruition. And now let's continue on with the main event and our next distinguished honoree. I'm so pleased to introduce Glenn Lowry, the David Rockefeller Director of the Museum of Modern Art and IPCNY 2020 honoree, Christophe Charix, the Robert Lehman Foundation Chief Curator of Drawings and Prints, the Museum of Modern Art. Hello, Christophe. Hi, Glenn. Let me begin by congratulating you on being an honoree for the IPCNY 2020 Awards. I can't think of anyone who deserves this recognition more than you. Thank you. And I'm so happy that we are here together to discuss a little bit the role of prints and maybe even drawings mm. at the Museum of mm. Modern Art. I have to say that over the years I was able to, uh, uh, to think about printmaking in a very different way than I had in the past. And I think that's really the Museum of Modern Art, the, the collective undertaking that every project always is here at the museum that allowed to broaden my own scope, my own understanding, my own scholarship and knowledge of what prints can be in, in the arts today. You played a major role along with your colleagues among the chief curators in really rethinking how to present our collections in the new museum, which opened in October almost exactly a year ago today. How, how do prints figure in that? Are we seeing more prints than ever? And how did you think about the role of prints and even drawings in the fabric of the museum? I think we see more prints than ever in the history of the museum, even if I haven't checked 
uh, every year in the history of the Museum of Modern Art. However, now you see prints all over the museum, throughout all the exhibitions, the different spaces. I think when we started uh, to think about what the museum should be in an expanded space and the opportunity it gave us to really rethink curatorially how we work and how we share our collection, we felt it was important to take more advantage of the richness and depth of our collection. And I think here prints specifically play a major role because we don't collect prints how you collect painting and sculpture. You collect them more broadly. You try to, uh, to get the texture of, of a period. You try to think about not only the most well-known artists, but the artists who work with them. You start to really understanding an artist throughout his or her entire practice, rather than focusing your priorities at different times of his or her work. So prints allow to do that. It gives you a background. It gives you a richness, a depth that you wouldn't find maybe in any other medium. So I think we took full advantage of that. And, and I'm, I'm very proud to say that it's only the great curators of drawings and prints, but the curators of the entire institution. What was really interesting was to see curators suddenly dive into prints, use prints or drawing in order to, to connect the dots, to think about history in a different way. Betty Sarr is an excellent example of focusing on someone that the museum had a long-standing interest in but had never really managed to make a major important acquisition. And do you want to talk a little bit about how sometimes critical acquisitions lead to exhibition programs, the way in which you seed the future mm -hmm. with these very strategic moves? Betty is a good example indeed. I think when we decided to acquire a large work of, uh, of early printmaking, before she really become Betty Saar, before she become a sculptor, somebody who worked deeply in assemblage, uh, she, she worked not exclusively, but primarily in printmaking. And that allows us to understand her process, understand how she thinks about images, how for her every work is fundamentally a collage. And suddenly we turn around and we said, let's look again at what our great assemblage that we own the collection, uh, Black Girl's Window. And kind of we realized with Sister Adler, this work, you know, come out of printmaking. If you start look at in every box, you'll see little fragments of prints or drawings or objects that she collected. So in a way, it really allowed to, to better understand the singularity of her work. It was something that came from a very, very precise place. And I think prints here allow us to share, share her, her work in, in a very unique way. I think it's so clear, Christophe, why you are this year's honoree or one of this year's honorees. Your passion, your knowledge, your commitment, not just to art and to contemporary art, but also to printmaking and to the artists who make prints part of our daily lives. I just want to say again, congratulations. Thank you, Glenn, and thank you for allowing this department to grow uh, at the museum over the last year. Thank you so much. We've worked together since Christoph first came to MoMA and uh, he is a consummate curator. He's immensely talented. He has a great eye and he is as adventurous as he is discerning. Christoph is also a terrific leader. He is totally unflappable. Uh, he is always graceful and he is absolutely discreet. Uh, he presided over the merger between MoMA's drawings and prints departments, two very, very robust departments, and he did it with tremendous elan and great grace. Uh, in fact, I've often thought that had art not been his calling, Christoph would have been a world-class diplomat. Christoph, I add my heartiest congratulations to you joining in with those from the entire Department of Drawings and Prints, and in fact, joining in congratulations from the entire MoMA family. We salute you, we adore you, and I hope you know how much we all love working with you. Hi, this is Ed Wachenheim. It is easy and a pleasure to say a few words about Christophe. To start with, is a great passion for art. I saw this passion when he was bidding for Picasso's Weeping Woman, stage four. Unfortunately, he lost the bid. He was not a happy camper. But then, about a month later, he had a chance to purchase another copy 
of Picasso's Weeping Woman Stage 4 at even a better price. And the staff was ecstatic. He couldn't have been happier. You could see the passion come through. But Gustav is more than a world-class curator and lover of art. He is a wonderful person. He is a great husband to Amy, a great father to Paul. He is a constant source of joy to all whose lives he touches. If only the world was full of Gustavs. Congratulations, Gustav, and Godspeed. My name is Betty Saar, and I am a sommelier artist in Los Angeles, California. I met Christophe about three or four years ago when he was the chief curator of an exhibition of my early prints and drawings. That show helped to reopen MoMA in 2019. Christophe also very kindly recommended my work for the Wolfgang Hong Award Museum at Lowick in Germany, which is a great honor for me. Thank you, Christophe. I really appreciate that he is such a strong supporter of my work and also of other women artists and artists of color. Congratulations, Christoph, on being honored on this occasion. Thank you very much. You deserve it. Hi, my name is Dan Walsh. I'm a painter, bookmaker, and printmaker. Uh, I first met Christoph in uh, he was 93 in Geneva. We became fast friends and worked together on some projects. He was very instrumental in my um, taking up bookmaking. He published my first book. We worked together over the years. I continued to make books and prints. Christoph curated a show of mine in 2002 at Cabinet Days of Stamp in Mamco. In the meantime, he was curating uh, other shows at Mamco. The one that I always remember is the Matisse, Gregor, and uh, Monotype show. That was a great show. He's a great curatorial eye. He moved on to New York, continues to do great things there. But most importantly, I consider him a good friend and Amy. He deserves this recognition. Wow, Christoph. It's been 10 years since we first met at, at ULA. Hard to believe, right? Um, but I'm still impressed. I must say, um, how you're able to put together professional talents and human natural gifts. Also, you are so unselfish and modest in your position and a very important position at the Museum of Modern Art. Your broadness of mind and sense of responsibility towards artists and your focus on works of major significance have set a new direction at MoMA. <laughs> and your recent exhibition of Betty Saar is a great example of that uh, direction. Congratulations to you and hats off to uh, IPCNY for recognizing this wonderful talent you have. Hello, I'm Jacob Samuel, an Intaglio printer and publisher for over 45 years, presently teaching at UCLA. I met Christoph in 2009 at MoMA. On View was In and Out of Amsterdam, an exhibition he curated that had an adventurous and humorous attitude, which I found very refreshing. All the exhibitions he has been involved with show his interest in the individual and societal context of artists and movements, making him truly a curator for this era. His leadership at the Modern reflects his understanding of today's changing narratives and show how ahead of the curve he has always been. Congratulations, Christoph, for the work you've done and the leadership you've shown. I also feel very fortunate to be your friend. Thank you, IPCNY, Judy, Maud, and all attending this event. I'm deeply touched and very grateful to be here tonight with Judith Fellotkin, whose work I greatly admire, and William Kentridge, an artist who as a printmaker transformed our field. I was very moved to learn that Betty, Marlene, Bill and Glenn agreed to participate in tonight's celebration. It means the world to me. In a night like this one, my thoughts go to those with whom I had the privilege to cross paths at MoMA. Deborah Wye, who asked me to join the museum 13 years ago and taught me so much. And my extraordinary colleagues in the Department of Drawings and Prints. This award is really for them and the talent, the scholarship, the passion, the commitment they bring in everything they do. 
Thank you, Jordi, Star, Sarah, Lonka, Esther, Samantha, and all of you in DNP for being such a wonderful part of my life at the museum. And thank you, Amy and Paul, for all the rest. You inspire me every day. Congratulations again to Christophe. On my show, All of It, I had the pleasure of interviewing talented MoMA staff, some in Christophe's department for the museum's reopening in 2019. And it's wonderful to see these images and people and to know that we can now visit in person again. Before we move on to the final moments of the event with William Kentridge, let's listen to IPCNY trustee, himself an artist, Anders Bergstrom, who will introduce us to IPCNY's New Prints program. My first time uh, as an artist, getting a print in to the show was um, like a really great day. I was super happy. And that was in 2008. It was always good to have people come see your work on a wall in Chelsea, and it felt good. It gave great uh, sort of encouragement. New Prints is a twice a year juried exhibition that's been going on at uh, IPCNY since the very beginning. And it's sort of the foundation of uh, the programming here. One of the great things I think about New Prints is that it's an open call and it uh, casts a wide net internationally. Submissions from all over the globe. Uh, it's a very diverse group that the works are selected from. There's no fee for the artist to submit their work to be seen. In 2017, IPCNY added the Artist Development Program to the New Prints Program, which was sort of an extra way for IPCNY to help nurture uh, young printmakers' careers. There's an in-house small studio that's available, and there's also a, a partnership with Robert Blackburn Workshop and Lower East Side Print Shop. As an artist and trustee of IPCNY, it's exciting to see works go from the new prints program on these walls to go to major museums uh, around the world. Hi, I'm Shivangi Ladha. My works were part of the new prints winter 2018 exhibition at IPCNY. And that was the first time my work got acquired by the Amherst uh, College uh, Mead Museum at Massachusetts. Who is that? I was awarded a residency at RPCNY and the works I created during that time were later showcased at the EAB Print Fair. That was the first time for me to work in the New York City and uh, after that my career has uh, really changed a lot. I am very grateful to have received uh, three prestigious residencies uh, in two years time. This all has happened only because of the support and the recognition I have received from IPCNY at the first place. I believe that IPCNY um, uh, believes in cultural diversity. They understand how histories and culture are so connected to each other and the way they are supporting young and emerging artists from all over the world um, who are doing great in the field of filmmaking is, uh, is, is, is great. As a person of color, as a non-Westerner, the amount of love and acceptance I have received from this organization has been incredible. And I genuinely would like to thank and congratulate everyone on the team who are doing such amazing work. Up next for New Prints, which will be winter 2021, uh, we're excited to say that Black Women of Print, the collective, is our juror. We're excited to see what they come up with. Hello everyone, I'm Tanikia Word, founder of Black Women of Print, a home place for Black women printmakers. We are super excited to jury the Winter 2021 New Prints Exhibition. We cannot wait to see the submissions later this month. I specifically love printmaking because it allows me to take my visual language to an entire new level by using lines and contours and tone and textures. And I'm just super excited to see exactly how you use the medium of print. Thank you all. And what an incredible program full of opportunities for emerging artists. And now a reminder about IPCNY's auction, which is open for bidding now until 5 p.m. Eastern time tomorrow. Proceeds benefit all the programming that you just learned about. Let's take a closer look at two of these great works to give you a sample of what's available. This work by Sanford Biggers is from the series, The Floating World, and explores American history and African-American experience. 
This mixed media print is inspired by his large quilt works that reference a theory that the Underground Railroad shared information in code using quilts to African Americans traveling. And right now at the Bronx Museum, you can view the artist's first survey of these quilt-based works. Jenny Holzer made this print for Earth Day 2020. One of her great truisms, all things are delicately interconnected. This print is reflective, metal on metal. It has a palladium leaf on top of a metal ground, and you really need to walk by to see the reflection and see it change. And now a final very special video message to close out the evening from artist, director, performer, and yes, obsessive printmaker, William Kentridge. Kentridge began his career making prints and posters for resistance theater during the anti-apartheid movement in South Africa. And like drawing, prints remain a primary vehicle for his expression. William promises to be with us next year when IPCNY can honor him in person and we all can get together and gather with him and celebrate being in each other's company. For now, let's enjoy his inspiring words and message direct from his studio in Johannesburg. Good evening, this is William Kentridge in my studio in Johannesburg, sending greetings to you all at the International Print Center benefit event this evening. As you can imagine, it's not possible at the moment to travel from South Africa to New York, and so this greeting. I hope that next year it is possible for me to be with you in person in New York. Also, I'm very aware that this message is recorded uh, in the weeks just before your big election, and I have at this stage no idea whether this is an evening of continuing celebration or commiseration. Certainly all the echoes of what happens in your part of the world rebound and resound down in South Africa as well. The focus on printmaking, which has been such a central part of my practice for the last 40, 45 years, is something that makes me very happy that it, there, is, there are centers in which this is understood not as an adjunct, as an extra to an artist's practice, but a central way of thinking for many artists. The strange transformation from a left hand to a right hand in the reversal of an image. The transformation, the, al the alchemy of the pressure of a press, of pressing the paper and print through. The logic and erotics of printmaking, the proof and the remaking of a proof until your syllogism makes sense. The soft ground, the bed, the spit bite, the blanket, the sheet, all the different terms of printmaking are part of what refer to the unconscious energy of working in this medium. That it's not a drawing, it's not a painting, even though it involves drawing and may involve painting. It has to do in the object being so close to you and so transformed by the processes of printing itself that it has gone through, whether it is a photogravure, an aquatint, a liner cut, a woodcut, a silkscreen print, a seriograph. Um, and I really miss being able to be in conversation with people who share this interest, who have the understanding of what these different techniques are. But I wish you all the best of evenings, even if it's digitally and by Zoom, and look forward to the following year when we can say next year in New York. Thank you. That's what IPCNY is about, reminding us just how meaningful prints are. And once a year at this special event, IPCNY is about honoring great talent, groundbreaking artists like William Kentridge, pathfinding curators like Christophe Charix, and trailblazing printers like Judith Slotkin. I want to thank you all for watching IPCNY's benefit tonight. If what you've heard and seen has inspired and moved you, please join me and become an IPCNY supporter. And remember, at IPCNY, any amount that you give has tangible and immediate impact. So please be as generous as possible. Text to donate, 
The number is right there on your screen or click below to donate or go to ipcny.org. Have a good night, stay safe, thank you, and let's end with words of thanks from IPCNY's amazing staff. I would like to thank our dedicated donors without whom we simply couldn't deliver our programs. Our individual supporters, all the foundations that have supported us through the years, and to the National Endowment for the Arts in New York City and State for their sustaining grants. Thank you to our independent curators, whose exhibitions at IPCNY inspire discovery, tell new stories, and challenge us to think about the media movements and our world in new ways. I want to thank IPCNY's artist community, who are at the core of what we do. It's a pleasure to work with the New Prince artists and artists in residence, as well as our artist educators and Printfest students. I would like to thank our engaged audience who visit our physical space and who visit us online and participate in our public programmings. I would also like to thank our phenomenal interns. Thank you once again to all of our honorees, the presenters, and all of you who contributed to these marvelous testimonials about their work. Thank each and every one of you for tuning in this year, and we look forward to seeing you in person in 2021. Thank you and good night. IPCNY is an amazing resource for the printmaking community. IPCNY is a supportive community of printmaking nerds and thoughtful mentors. IPCNY is a welcoming space. Um, it's a place where anyone who comes in the gallery is able to feel welcome and part of this community of printmakers. IPCNY is a place that is community. It brings people together. Um, it brings the artist community together and it brings art lovers together, um, which I think is extremely special. Um, IPCNY was my first internship and IPCNY helped me learn about what it's like to work in a gallery setting. Um, and as an artist myself, it showed me a positive relationship between the gallery and the artist, which was really special for me to see.